Hi, I'm Birdman Mel. Good morning. Welcome to this great session we're going to have together talking about birds. And you know, we're going to talk about some things that are going to be great for children, great for old, young alike. And we we're going to talk about H2O, the secret weapon. Of course, I'm talking about water. And you'll say, well, yeah, Mel, I just put some water out in a bird bath. Well, think about how many times that didn't quite work out like you thought. Many, many times I see bird baths all over the America and there's no birds in them. I'll tell you some of them all I have fish and crocodiles in them and I'll tell you why I say that sort of thing but uh, before we get going on that I do want you to know we're also going to talk about how to see more birds in the summer some little tips regardless of water that would help you find and see more birds and we're also going to announce a way that you can learn how to photograph birds better that'll be on the site very shortly so I say rub-a-dub-dub but birds they don't bathe in a tub okay so remember, that's going to be our theme. But first, I am so happy to say happy birthday, Amy Hasco. I know you are on every week. You've been a great fan, and I need to thank your friend, and you need to, Cassie, for saying happy birthday to you. So I'm really glad both of you are on with us today. And I want to remind you, like every Saturday, we're going to give away hundreds of dollars worth of prizes. We're going to give away for grand prizes. This is Birdman Mel's favorite bath. It's called a Songbird Spa. We'll tell you why later. And then we're going to give away my favorite glass bird bath. It's a leaf bird bath. And it comes on a very low stand. And we're going to talk about the importance of that in a bird bath. All bird baths are not created equal. That's why birds use some of them and sure don't use most of them. Okay? But even if you got one of those mm, kind of undesirable bird baths, I'm going to do my best to give you some tips to how to get birds to use that thing and how to have them safely use it. So we'll have some fun with water. Don't forget, as far as winning these uh, prizes, there's a couple things you can do. I saw early, hey, somebody's on from Florida. Wherever you're from, go on, let us know, because we're going to have a pool of you away from here that wins a very nice prize. And same way, if you're from Missouri, those of you from Missouri, tell us where you're at here in central Missouri. Of course, we run the Songbird Station in Columbia, Missouri, but all over the country there are wild bird suppliers, there's nurseries, there's hardware stores that are very serious about birding. And anything I show you today, I want to make sure you realize you go in there and buy them. If you need to find them, let us know. We can tell you who's in your area. I actually helped somebody find a store in their area up in Wisconsin yesterday, so feel free to reach out to us. Besides telling us where you're from, the other ways that you increase your chances of winning these hundreds of dollars of prizes and everything I hold up, we're going to give away. And you could, you could use it to get birds to your yard. So, uh, you know, like us. Uh, tell friends about us. Uh, ask a question. Answer a question. That's a great way to win a prize because we have several major prizes, including the grand prizes, where I give you the answers during the session, but the question comes at the very end. So that's how you win those grand prizes. And don't forget to tag a friend right now and say, hey, you know, I think you're going to like this thing. So uh, stay tuned. I am excited in that we're going to cover some things that are, are going to be fun and, and you're going to like it, but it's also not going to cost you a lot of money. You know, water's free. Think about the price of water versus the price of bird seed. So in that way, it's going to be a way to attract a lot of birds, but not cost you a lot of money. And I'm a tight lot old German, and I like saving money. I'll tell you that. But before we go to there, I always want to hit each week, what's hot? What are you asking about? Well, as we closed off last week, lots of you said, oh, my gosh, I'm kind of losing my goldfinches, and I'm kind of not seeing so many hummingbirds. Well, tell you what, guys, what's going on is in God's life a cycle, it's, it's time to have babies for the hummingbirds. So they're going to the woods, they're kind of becoming more territorial, and they're finding the native plants that are out there. They're finding nectar sources beside your feeder. So what I do is just bring down the number of feeders I had down for a while, but I still do some things like knocked it here on the floor, keep out that big red bow from Christmas, because there's still some birds that are migrating through or might drift within the range looking for nectar. You might steal a few from the neighbor, you know, if you got out some bright red things. So keep that in mind. I, I noticed yesterday we had that big humbug red thing with the fruit inside of it for the fruit flies to grow and hummingbirds, butterflies eat that. I had a hummingbird check that out and then zoop, came over to the deck and he was there at the feeder where I wanted him to be. So red is a secret and patience. The goldfinches don't nest until August in our part of the world. So keep that in mind. They're going to drift around in flock seating, but they'll be back. The other thing every week we do is say share some photos with us. And you win a prize. Anybody that sends in a photo gets one of these neat pocket bottles. Clip on your belt. Easy to take with you. 
But I am happy to say that Joe and Kearney Peterson won the prize of a choice between a packet for seed and a packet for hummingbirds. Uh, a great prize, over $50 for being the best photo this week. And we had some great, great photos. And we're posting the five uh, finalists on that too, just to say thanks for the great job. I talked about when to see birds. If you haven't discovered it, if there's ever a time to get up early in the morning and enjoy a cup of coffee out on the patio or the deck, this is the time because that is when you'll see the most birds. Absolutely. I see more birds from dawn, that first hour, than I probably see the rest of the day. Not just because I'm working, but even this weekend when I'm home. You know, it gets hot. They're like you and me. They go, oh, I don't want to be out in that sun. So think about it. And uh, that time in the evening is a very good time to see them. And guess what? During the day, rather than at feeders, the place you'll see birds the most is at a source of water. So that's why we're talking about water today. Because during the daytime, that's when you're going to see them the most. Okay? The other thing you folks asked for was a, a session. We do that Ask the Experts night, if you haven't discovered it yet, on Tuesday nights. Well, not going to have one this spring. I'm going to try to get one this fall on the uh, how to take photos of the birds. But I was tickled to death. One of the speakers that we're going to have next week is Brian Lentz. And he's going to talk about... Uh, this next Tuesday night, avoiding bird collisions, and make sure you tune in, 8 o'clock Central Time. But his organization is hosting a photo seminar. It's Taking Good Bird Photos, a webinar, June 11th, 4 to 5 o'clock Central Time. So we're going to put a link on our site to that so that you can find it. And those of you that want to start learning that right now, you can do it. But we'll cover it again later. But I know they've got three great photographers. That's going to be good. Let's talk birds, water, why do they need it? Quick question, who has the highest temperature? A bird, brain, or a, you know, old mammal like Mel? Which one? Think about it a little bit, okay? And how do birds cool off? That's a question. Real quick, answer that, rascal, you win a prize. How do they cool off? Do they sweat like you and me? Boy, I can do that on a hot day, but I'll give you the answers. Actually, birds have a higher temperature than, than we do. You know, 98.6 is where we're at, where birds go 96.8 to 102.2 is the data that I've said. So they've got an even higher body temperature. So when summer heat hits, it's bad news. A 20 degree increase in temperature, like from 85 to 105, that is really, really tough on those rascals. It increases their need for moisture three times. That's a three X need for more intake of water because of what happens, what they have to do to cool off. So that, you know, you know, is the main thing is why water is so important to cool them off. How do they do it normally? They do it by panting. You'll see a bird go, <laughs> you know, kind of like a dog, only, you know, they're doing, you can't always see it. You see a robin go across the yard in the summertime, <laughs> you know, you can kind of see his beak wide open. That's what he's doing. He's panting, trying to get that hot air out of him. So the one thing I wanted to ask them, can all birds swim? Yes or no, real quick, can all birds swim? Give me an answer on that. The answer is no. Most of the birds in your yard can't swim. That's why rub-a-dub-dub, those birds cannot drink in a tub because they can't swim. Would you want to go in something you're going to drown in? Okay, so we're going to talk about some solutions on that. I did mention to you, that, you know, how critical... Uh, keeping cool was with the birds and how much well how can you help them you know besides putting out water we'll try to keep it a little cooler you might add a few ice cubes during those really really hot days uh keep it in the shade we're going to talk about the best place to keep it you know you got to balance it to where they're going to use it keep it cool and most of all keep cats away and abc's got some great information about cats that we'll be posting for you after brian's sessions tuesday night too out of Explain to your neighbors why you just can't let that cat run around. They kill millions of songbirds. But, uh, you know, those are some ways you can keep it cool or just refill it often out of the hose. Because, as you know, when you open a faucet, that water's colder coming out of the ground than what it is setting out in the sun or even in the shade on a hot day. So keep those things in mind. It really does make a difference to the birds. Besides cooling, birds need water for food digestion. All birds do. In a session a while back, I talked to you about a bird that doesn't eat bugs, doesn't eat fruit, so it really badly needs water. And I think it's one of the reasons, if you didn't have water out, that you lost a lot of your birds to go somewhere else. Because if they're eating a lot, they're going to drink a lot. So somebody give me the answer of what bird that is, okay? And I'll come back to that in just a second. Of course, the other thing they need is to, you know, to clean, to get those feathers. A lot of times in the wintertime, I talk about how important it is for birds. Because 
Go grab that old down coat that all the feathers are right stuck to you. How warm is that thing? Not at all. You gotta fluff your feathers out if you're a bird and collect some air in there, and that's what keeps you warm. Well, in the summertime, all that old grimy old feathers get stuck to you. Well, then, think about it, that keeps parasites, and birds do have parasites. That's why I always say, you know, use gloves when you fill the feeders and wash your hands afterwards. But, you know, those parasites and stuff get on there, and it's more weight. So when a bird tries to fly, it can't go so fast because it's just all dirty and grimy, okay? Kind of like they clean them airplanes all the time. Well, you got to clean the wings on a, on a bird the same way. So cleanliness is next to godliness for birds, just like people, okay? The other thing you'll have fun if you put a bird bath out is seeing the differences in how they drink. If you watch, most birds will get a drink, and then they'll tilt their head back. Unfortunately, as you guys know, I'm kind of angry at the doves. I got too many of them, and pigeons drink this way. They'll put their head in, and it's just kind of like drinking through a straw. So totally different, you know, than the others. And, oh, you know, it's kind of bad in that uh, they kind of monopolize the bird bath. So I'm, I'm doing a few things to encourage some of them to, to go somewhere else. When you watch birds bathe, too, that's a lot of fun. Teach your children. It's kind of like getting a kid in the bathtub the first time. First, they kind of get up and get their chest wet. Then they get comfortable, then they start putting the wings in a little bit. Before you know it, they got the wings in, they got the tail in it. Oh, man, is this comfortable, you know? But then, they, you know, you know the bass getting close, and they bring their wings up, and they start fluffing them, water goes everywhere. But I tell you what, when that happens, look around, because there are going to be some more birds say, what is going on? They come in, and before you know it, you're going to see mama there, and all the little birds, they're going to be there doing their thing on the edge, and it's a really fun learning experience. So uh, that's why it's worth listening to me on these tips we're going to talk about. So I talked about it earlier. So many bass I see out there are so deep, you ought to be raising fish or tadpoles and them things. I tell you what. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. The biggest thing you got to do then is realize that and this is an important number to know. The right depth for a bath is two inches, no more than three inches deep if you want to get birds and you want to have it safe. And the other thing is to have it a rough surface or have, a, have it kind of gently go in there. You know, birds don't want to dive in because remember, they can't swim, so they're scared of that thing. So uh, we'll talk about some ways to do that in your bird bath. Same thing goes on. Some of you got fish ponds, you got water gardens in them. I look at them and they got them black edging things and jump right down into, you know, that much water. Well, that dog don't hunt for a bird, okay? Unless you're a dog, okay? Or a koi fish or something. So, uh, again, you got to kind of have a gentle beach in there where they can slope in. And a little extra tip, by the way, is if you put some sand on that beach, and I actually have, and we'll talk about it sometime, a drab bed stream where the water hits this stream in my yard and goes down to a little waterfall deal I got. Well, if you keep that sand wet, the butterflies come. And we're going to talk about butterflies in a couple weeks, so stay tuned on that. I think that's going to be our last session before we end this summer. Uh, but uh, make sure you have a source or a, a way that birds can gently go into a pond or, or a, a fish thing or something like that where you have them koi fish because otherwise they ain't going to use it. Okay, so good tips there. And again, remember, most birds can't swim. And if somebody out there's got a life jacket, they can get on one. Tell me about it. But I've never seen none of them, okay? So again, rub-a-dub-dub. You can't use a tub, but you can actually use a tub. There's a thing, an inventor up at Iowa, and I apologize. I meant to look up at his name. Many families have turned to us and say, hey, Birdman Mel, keep my dream alive. Well, this thing's called a bird bath raft. And I'm going to try to show you how it works here in this little tub. And the main thing I see people use them is like wine tubs and stuff, but it actually floats on the water. And it gives a safe way for birds to do it. There's a little hose in here, they let the water, I don't know how the heck it works, he's a smart guy that invented it. But it gives them an edge, but it floats on the edge, so it gives them a safe place to do. And I've seen people put them in bird ponds too as a way to do it. So, you know, an old tub, an old bucket, uh, they actually have put these in stock tanks in the southwest, because they had some bats that were drowning in the stock tanks. And they put this thing there in it, and then again, it just gives a bird a place to land and drink, and this little depth here gives enough water that they can bathe too. So I really believe the bird bath raft is the best dollar for dollar thing I'm telling you about today that can help you do and help the birds for the least amount of dollar. Remember, I told you I'm a title German, so just put this thing in anything that holds water, a big old flower pot or whatever, and you got a bird bath that's safe for the birds, okay? So you can rub a dub dub a bird in a tub with a bird bath wrap, okay? So if you got a whiskey barrel or wine barrel, any of those things, it works, okay? But we're gonna talk about other kinds of bath too. So I already told you this is my favorite bath, the Songbird Spa. Why do I say that? 
Well, we're going to talk about where to put bass as far as how high. Actually, close to the ground is the best place. Think about it. Where is the water normally? It's not up here where so many of those bass are. It's down on the ground. So if you want a bird to find a bird bath, put it on the ground. Duh. Okay. The thing I like about these is they're very easy to clean. This is a polypropylene. And the thing on the spa, as you see here, this little card here, well, in the wintertime, heated water costs you pennies a day. And this bath already comes with it. So, boom, you got it like that, close to the ground. I must confess, though, I moved this bath in the wintertime because down in the ground in Missouri means snow going to be over it if you ain't careful sometimes. And I find my birds really love in the wintertime the bath up by the deck. Well, this thing comes with a couple ways to mount it up on your deck in the wintertime. So I'll move this rascal from the ground up. So that's why I like that. But I really like these bass with the takeout liners. There you go, young man. I'm very lucky Kaylee is here uh, helping Miss, Mr. Jeffrey, like usual. So I want to thank them because without them, old Birdman Mel, you know, you wouldn't hear or see nothing. And, you know, I'd be dropping about half the stuff that I show you. So we're going to talk about some of the other bass. Uh, that polypropylene. Give me that one there. The other bass, really proud. We run a wood shop here in Missouri, and we learned from the folks over in Illinois at a plant called Looker. But we make these cedar bass, and again, recognize this thing here. It's just a plant saucer, and you know, just that rascal right there can work for a bath too. You know, it really can. Uh, so just a plant saucer. You might already own be it clay or this. But I like these hanging ones because a lot of you had yard hooks, and you can move them around. And if you notice, we got quite a bit of chain on it. So, you know, you don't have to put this thing up next to God. You can take a yard hook that's not so high, put this bath on it, and you kind of have it down by the ground. I find birds really like this because I think, I don't know, I interview them and they won't talk to me, but I think the rough edges, the real wood thing, I think it makes a difference. I think they like it. Jeffrey, let me swap you for that other one there. Thank you so much, young man. This is my other favorite one out of wood because, again, guess what? Low to the ground, okay? It has a dish that you can take out and clean. Really like these cedar bass from Songbird Essential with those takeout polypropylene. And you can get these from any wild bird supplier in America. They know who to call and just tell them, hey, I want one of them things that Birdman Mail showed me. And we'll be glad to do that. So those polypropylene things are, are my favorite. We do sell an awful lot of glass bass. So I'm going to need a couple of them glass bass. And I say glass, one kind of glass is poly resin. And we'll show some big ones. But this one here is from... The uh, folks at Panacea, they actually, they licensed uh, the Audubon label. And it's a nice hanging bath there. So, you know, I want to tell you there are some other people that make good products besides us. I don't want to forget that. And we showed you the bath like this guy here with the going finch on it. Seem good? Yep, yep. Oh, that's your answer. That's the guy who's got to have water. Or he just going to go somewhere else because he doesn't get it any other way. So that's why I use this big old boy. And show me that one there. We got one more because this is the other guy that really likes water. Not necessarily he will not bathe in it, but having water for this humming, this guy, the hummingbirds, is really important to keeping them in your yard. You want to get some more back? I'll tell you how in just a second. Stay tuned. Okay. And you know we do those things and hanging and stuff. But a couple of the baths we forget to tell folks about. My son got these. They're really nice heavy ceramic baths. And again, you hang them down low where the wind don't blow and the birds come up here and eat. And, you know, my favorite always is this cobalt blue. It just looks like water. God made water look kind of like this at the ocean. So when I look at that, I think, oh, I'm over by the ocean, which is not going to go there for a while. But here you go. Thank you so much. I love those bass. So some different bass, but I got two more I want to show you because, again, it's not just what we make. It's what else is out there. Let's have that one here. I really like this bass, and we have a yard full of these over at Songbird Station. This is another variation if you didn't want the wood. I wish it wasn't quite so tall, but these are made out of fiber clay from TDI. And notice again, rough edge here, slope in gentle. So, you know, that is, I want to compliment these folks. They did that well. And the other thing is sometimes the ladies want a little bit of a fancier bath. Whoops, I'm knocking everything over. I should ask you to help me, Jeffrey. Again, a copper bath, solid copper, but notice rough on here and goes in gentle and I like that their stands down lower. This one's from Ancient Graffiti, another good vendor of the birding industry. So some neat bass there. Again, what? how deep? Question, this is for a prize. How deep is a normal bath supposed to be if you really want it to be safe? I'll come back to that in a second. Now if it's not that way, what are we going to do? We just going to throw that bath away? Not this tight old German. A couple things you can do. Of course, go gather up some rocks. And make sure one of them rocks, you know, is kind of flat or something. We put some rocks in that old bird bath or put sand in the bottom. A lot of folks say put sand in there. And 
I do that some, but when we talk about care, I believe that you should clean a bath out every four to seven days. And I get tired of picking that sand up. So I try to use gravel and rocks so that when I tilt the bath, I can kind of hold my hand there and it don't get underneath of it so much when I clean her out good. So, uh, you know, uh, some fine pea gravel and rocks is what I recommend putting in a bird bath to give it some height if it's too deep already, okay? But some of those are that this deep, folks, I don't know what you're going to do there other than put a bird bath raft in that thing, okay? That would be my advice on that. Now, where would you put a bath? Well, I normally say in the open, about 15 feet from shrubs or whatever, because I'm worried about a predator getting my birds, and I'm wanting to be able to look around and say, where is that pussycat? I mean, I... You know, what's new pussycat is not a good song for me. It's not a good song for the birds because they eat so much. And think about when that bird's all wet, those feathers are hard to flop, okay? So I want that bath close enough to a tree or a fence or I use a T-post in one of my spots. What you need, and I show this because I use this out in front of the bluebird houses and thank you guys that have sent photos saying, hey, that worked, I love seeing mama out there. But a T-post is just a stick of wood. We drilled a hole in it out at the wood shop. We got those over at Songbird, and your stores can get them. But it gives birds a place to kind of say, hey, I'm next. I'm next. Or mama and our babies. Think about how cool that is. And I'm going to try to catch some photos. I don't really need these because I got trees all around, but I'm putting it by one of my bass so I can catch some photos to show you how much fun it is to see mama and the babies. We'll either catch them on the bath on the photo or we'll catch them on here later. So keep a post in mind. Or it could just be an old branch. You stick in the ground on a muddy day but do have a place that they can fly to you know to shake off and you know they'll sit there and go oh this feels so good you know they got to get dry so they can fly and fly fast and because you know hawks are still around they're a predator natural predator birds as well as cats so keep that in mind again when it's hot move it a little bit more over into the shade you're going to find that that helps so what else can I do to attract birds and how do I take care of them? Again, the biggest thing is clean them out at least once a week. I use the Carefree Bird Bath. We had a big old side. I just put a cap of this in. It keeps the sludge. It just helps keep a lot of stuff from building up in the bath. The number one thing, and, and this was our first Songbird Essentials product. That's how important it is, is a good scrub brush that you can clean that thing good, okay? And one part bleach, nine parts water is what I always say to clean everything. But clean that thing at least once a week. That alone will get you a lot more birds, and it will keep them safer. Okay? Got to do that, guys. Okay? So uh, keep that in mind. And uh, the other thing, then, is remember to put it where I said to put it. But the next thing is move that water. And I don't know if you guys can see here. Can they see this, Miss Kaylee, this little thing here? Okay. Well, this is a little fountain that I put in bird baths. It comes from ancient graffiti. They make one that's got a lotus blossom on it here, too. I'll give them a little commercial. And you can switch these leaves around here to, the, to change the splash. It was splashing on me earlier. So things that move water, this little fountain here, we got these at Songbird Station. You can set them in a bath or just set them on a table. The sound of that water draws birds in. Always I see migratory birds at my water features first. They hear that water when they fly over, even if it's not as loud as you think. And moving water attracts them. Where'd my mouth jug go? It can be so simple as taking a hoe. Just, there's just a little hole on the bottom of this belt jug. Now it's dripping more normal because Ding Dong Birdman sat it in the bucket with the water. But you just hang this thing like this, loosen the cap or put a hole in, and you get more dripping water. And it's amazing how many more birds that attracts. Remember, that means no mosquitoes, okay? Because moving water, mosquito eggs can't hatch. So very, very important. As I showed you in the past, the water wiggler, a great way. This is battery powered, but they do have a solar one. And this thing just lands in your bird bath and keeps the water moving, okay? My favorite, of course, get all this stuff out of the way, is this solar thing that Grant invented, my son. You put this rascal in the bath, runs on solar, and you, you can make the little bubbly thing, or it makes a fine mist. I use the mist because the hummers go zoom, 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 you know, through it. Because, you know, they've been putting their beak in all them plants, and you kind of need some cleaning off there after going in after all that nectar, okay? So that's why a mister is real good, and that's why... We also invented this little thing called an easy mister. It just goes here on the end of the garden holes here. You just screw it on. I'm not too mechanical, but this one I can handle. Comes in a hook like that, and I hang it on the limb of a tree or hand it on a yard hook. And oh my gosh, do the birds zip through that. I guarantee you, if you use this thing, birds will use it. And you want to do it, if you can, where it goes next to the leaf. As I told you one other time, they love to do that leaf bath and go like this back and forth and just get all comfortable, okay? So some fun things about how you can use water 
to attract it, whether it's the misting or moving some, some way there in, as a bird bath, okay? And there are, you know, as you look at bird baths again, make sure they got ridges like this thing does and goes down. And we forget to tell folks, we got this stand here, we call it a tabletop, because a lot of people use these fancy baths to, you know, serve food at the tailgate or whatever. Well, guess what? They just go like that. And what have we done? What did I tell you where to put a bath? Yup, our normal stand, where's our normal stand? We make our normal stand a lot shorter than most people. This stand here, I made it this high because it goes right above most flower beds. I mean, most of my flowers aren't much taller than that. So I really like that. And I don't have no cats in my neighborhood. So this is real safe for them. But I tell you what, if I wasn't above the flower bed, this is the stand I would put it on. We call it a tabletop, but it ought to be ground level stand. So don't forget that sort of thing. One thought it hit me. I said cleanliness is next to godliness. We talked about using these little nectar protectors above your hummingbird feeders. Remember to clean these out too. I looked at mine the other day. I said, Mel, you didn't do what you said. It was all full of, you know, some bugs and stuff. I said, mm -hmm. oops, and they didn't get by it. But guess what? There come the chickadee to have a drink like Toji would. And I said, Mel, why didn't you clean it out? So it made me remind you guys today to clean these nectar protectors out, refill them with water, because they end up being little bitty miniature bird baths all over the yard. Just for a drink. I ain't never seen nobody try to take a bath in there. I have to be an awful small bird. But uh, just a fun way to, to give the birds some water. So having some fun today talking about water with you. But you know, we're going to keep asking you a couple questions. One thing I forgot to tell you on this mystery. Told you I'm a tightwad. Otherwise, I'd never told you about it. One gallon of water an hour. That is nothing. You, I mean, compare that to bird seed price. And I guarantee you to attract birds. Just a gallon of water an hour that little easy mystery uses. So a neat way to attract them. Not much money. Okie dokie, let me get caught up here on my notes. It's time to ask you the questions for some prizes, okay? What is Birdman Mel's favorite bird bath? Question number one. Question number two. What is Birdman Mel's favorite glass bird bath? I told you the answers. Hope you wrote them down. How deep is the water? Question number three. In a bird bath, what's the perfect depth? And how um, there's an inch above that that it should not be ever more than that. Okay, I gave you that answer. And what was the secret device I told you that was the way to use any device for a water and was, in my opinion, the best dollar per dollar thing I told you about? What product that uh, can go on a tub or something? I gave you a hint there. Okay, those are the questions. Get them in some answers. But I want to close. You know, one of our missions has been helping all over America. Those wild bird specialty stores, those lawn and garden centers that have the plants you need, and many of them have birding products, those hardware stores, those locally owned family businesses. So if you saw anything you like, please reach out to them because that's where we want you to do business. We hope you buy our Songbird Essentials brand because 95% of it's made here in America. But just go see those local guys. They're going to be there. They're going to load seed in your card for you right at the curb. They'll deliver it to you safely. And most of all, they got advice. You know, those guys know... You know, most of them know as much as old Birdman Mel. I hate to admit it. They just ain't got a camera crew like I got here. And they ain't got a big old mouth like I got. But they're good people. So go in those local stores. They'll take good care of you. And I want to thank you for coming. And keep those questions coming. As a lot of you have seen, we will stay here. Mr. Jeffrey and, and Miss Kaylee and I, we answer your questions as fast as we can. And we do keep the prize wheel running for like 10, 15 minutes while those questions keep coming on. So you increase your odds of winning. And we will do our very best to have all the prizes posted within an hour. So keep that in mind. And uh, congratulations to those of you that win this week. And it is all by random. There is no humbug going on in Birdman Mel's thing, okay? Did want to remind you Tuesday night, like I said, Brian Lentz will be with us from American Bird Conservatory. Uh, great, great man. Knows more about preventing birds running into your windows than any man on the face of the earth, in my opinion. So we're going to cover that subject at 8 o'clock Central Time. And then next Saturday, I'm going to have what I think is the best program I ever put on. It's how do you get children, is what you all asked me to do, involved in nature. But actually, it's anybody, frankly. Some of the tips I'm going to give you, and it's not going to be all about products. It's going to be how do you get your, maybe your dad or your mom that's, you know, kind of got a lot of time on their hands now and can't come see you as much as you want involved in nature. Or maybe that recently retired husband and you told him, I married you for better or worse, but I didn't say a thing about lunch. And now you got him in there at lunch all the time. So now, you know, that's a way to keep him outside a little bit. So I guarantee you we're going to have a bunch of tips that you're really going to like to get both the young and the old involved in nature.
And having said that, you know the quote that I like so much that God put in my mind about 10 years ago, and it's certainly more appropriate now than ever, and I want us to close with that, is nature is a stress reliever from God. Take time today to listen to the birds sing. Folks, thanks for joining